Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. For anyone following Age of Empires 4 news, we got a roadmap around two weeks ago, promising a big Winter 2021 update. There's been quite a few exploits for infinite resources, etc., and maybe partly because of pressure from that, the timeline was shifted up, and we now already have the Winter Patch in November. There's been a mixed response from the community over this update, as it definitely fixed some of the top issues and included a ton of changes that I'd say were 90% good. Though, as you might expect from a large update pushed through quickly, a new set of bugs was introduced that have already surfaced and are getting a lot of attention. We'll start off with the new notable features that the update includes. The first is the ability to view the map post-match, so you can have a look around after the game finishes. I tried this out and it didn't actually work for me, but supposedly it's in there now, and maybe just doesn't work in single player. Next, there's been some mini-map changes, and they've resized a lot of the icons, generally making things a lot smaller. All of the golds now have the same Triforce symbol, and small and large golds are differentiated by size only. Overall, it does seem like these smaller icons make things easier to read, so I think the changes are definitely in the right direction, though hopefully it's not now too small for some people, as the UI doesn't have much in the way of scaling options. The next change is the Chinese Dynasty button has been moved to the bottom left corner of the screen. You can also now turn off one-click garrison, as by default, a villager carrying nothing that's sent to the town center will garrison inside. But now in the settings, you can disable that, after which you can right-click the town center to drop off food and not worry about them garrisoning. Personally, I find the best way to garrison is always to highlight and use the hotkey G, as it's much easier than manually tasking them into buildings. They also mention improvements to selecting trees, animal corpses, including sheep, deep fish, and relics, etc. This has been a major complaint since the stress test, and subjectively, clicking on sheep feels a lot better now. I still get some finicky behavior around trees now and then, but with relics, I notice it's significantly easier, so this is a really nice quality of life change. Next, we're going to move on to balance changes, which I'm going to combine with bug fixes. They separate them in the patch notes, but I think they're closely related enough at this stage of the game to put together, and in some cases I'd argue the bug fixes have even more impact on a civilization's balance than what are labeled as official balance changes. We'll start with the core units. The first is an increase in spearmen and crossbow damage against cavalry and heavy classes respectively. Together, this really feels like an indirect nerf to knights. The horsemen also gain a bit of ranged armor, which makes sense as they're a counter to archers, but they then lose 20% of their HP across the board. Against melee units, that's a straight nerf, and against archers in feudal age who do 5 damage, this ends up being a wash. With any stronger type of archer though, horsemen will end up doing worse now, so overall this feels like a significant nerf. The hand cannon and streltsy damage was then reduced, which I suspect is to try to encourage a greater variety in late game unit compositions. Rams also now move a bit slower and have their health reduced from 900 to 700, but have their ranged armor doubled and population cost reduced to 1. I think what they're trying to do here is make rams easier to include in the late game, when population limit is a big factor and gunpowder units start to have very high ranged attack, while simultaneously making them a little easier for villagers to fight off in feudal age. Another change is the mangonel now fires 30% faster, and its area of effect is apparently now a full circle, whereas previously it was more directional. The implication from that is that it's now better to use them in the middle of a large group as opposed to the closest edge, which has the slight drawback of now needing to be closer to the fight to be fully effective. The Rebaldican also had its fire armor increase from 0 to 10, so it's a bit stronger against melee units, but its ranged armor was reduced from 2 to 0. Surprisingly, among all of these siege changes, there was no change introduced for Springholds, which are widely considered too strong by the player base, though they do mention it specifically as something they're looking into. On the water, the fishing boat cost was increased, making it a bit more of an investment to fish boom, though of course it's still going to have a massive payoff. They also buffed arrow ships against incendiary ships, and now they do double damage. My understanding is arrow ships were always supposed to be the counter to demo ships, which in practice didn't seem to be the case previously, so I like this change. I'm a little surprised they didn't include a tweak to the explosive radius of demo ships though, which seems to be much larger than intended when they're exploded manually. Another generic change is the Outpost Arrow Slits tech now adds a third more range to garrisoned arrows, in addition to the existing effect of firing arrows when they aren't garrisoned. Basically, it's just a bit better tech now. Elite Army Tactics at the University in Imperial Age also now adds 20% to the HP and attack of infantry, as opposed to 10% with no additional cost. Getting the final elite upgrades for units as well is also significantly faster to research, so we get a few late game unit transition buffs. But that's it for the general changes. For me, the biggest ones are the mangonel buff to attack rate in the area affected, the early game ram change, making them easier for melee units to fight, and the nerf to cavalry, both to horsemen directly, but even buffing the knight's counter units, which we'll see even more of as we switch to specific civilizations. 
We'll start with the Abbasid dynasty, which, if you're still learning the civilizations, is the Camel Civ. Their only official balance change was that their unique texts like phalanx, composite bow, and camel handling were moved from the House of Wisdom to different buildings. Unfortunately, a bug has already been uncovered that allows you to research phalanx an infinite number of times and attack any unit on the map. You can see the line between balance changes and bugs is already being blurred. It goes the other direction as well, and under fixed bug sections, there's a lot for Abbasids, which I would consider balance changes. This includes camel barding now correctly giving camels armor where before it didn't, trade ships correctly generating bonus resources, the tier 3 golden age now reduces the production time of all units and not just the first tier of each type, elite army tactics and boot camp upgrades now correctly stack with each other, camel unit base armor has been properly applied, whatever that means, boot camp no longer increases the attack speed of archer as it's an infantry tech, and improved processing no longer provides a 100% bonus to stone collection. Hopefully, you can see what I mean about the official balance changes being relatively minor, but the bug fixes have a lot of balance implications. Nerfing late game archers, making camels much stronger with additional armor, and your late game upgraded units are going to be produced faster than they were before. That's a lot of balance changes. Next up, we'll take a look at one of the big winners from the update, the Chinese. First of all, the tax collection cooldown on each building has been reduced from 30 seconds to 15. I see what they're getting at here, as at a certain point a building could have so much tax built up that it's impossible to collect by grabbing 20 or even 40 at a time. This change should also help reduce the Imperial official idle time as well. In the last video I did on Chinese and the impact of wheelbarrow on tax collection, it was brought up a few times that increasing tax collection doesn't really help since you can't collect it all anyway, and hopefully this addresses that. Imperial officials can also now supervise keeps, universities, and blacksmiths, which remember when supervising they triple the research speed for. All around, Imperial officials seem like they're going to be much more useful now. Another nice bug change is the Chinese Extra Materials technology no longer repairs enemy walls in addition to your own. I'm all for being a good neighbor, but this was a step too far. I'm not sure how often this actually came up in game, but I'm glad that it got noticed. The Chukanu's cost was also reduced by 40 food, and it now trains almost 50% faster, though its HP has been brought down to compensate. This gives them the same training time and overall cost as the regular archer, but costing gold instead of food. The archer has a bit more range and speed, but the Chukunu have greater damage output when you consider all of their arrows, making for an interesting trade-off. The Nest of Bees also had a major overhaul, as it now moves 50% faster, is trained 5 seconds faster, and does 25% more damage, but with the drawback of a bit more minimum range and lower HP, so it's more of a glass cannon sort of unit. Not listed, but also worth noting, is that Chinese farmers no longer walk to the center of the granary, which should make that building significantly better at increasing farmer efficiency. And finally, Pyrotechnics, which increases the range of gunpowder units, was also moved to the university, so you can now queue it up along with other university techs with a supervisor to power through them all. Next, for Delhi Sultanate, there's quite a few nerfs, with one main buff to potentially offset them. First, Sanctity now requires you to be in Feudal Age in order to research. This is the tech at the mosque that lets you capture holy sites before Castle Age, and I guess it was felt that Dark Age was a bit too early for that. In addition to that, the Delhi Research Time Multiplier was also overhauled. While they get most technologies for free, they previously had a 5 times base modifier, meaning they took 5 times longer to research technologies, but could speed that up by garrisoning scholars. There's now a staggered system, based on which age the tech is from. Dark and Feudal Age techs are going to be researched faster, but Imperial Age technologies should now be triple the previous time to reflect your increasing number of scholars. In theory, that should work, and in fact sounds good, but it feels quite buggy at release. Here you can see I have no scholars garrisoned and the first range attack at the blacksmith takes 3.5 minutes. I then put in 15 scholars and it's still 3.5 minutes to research. I've heard there are other bugs as well where research time is actually increased with more scholars, so hopefully this is all sorted out relatively soon. Their late game tech Honed Blades also now works properly and gives the advertised damage instead of too much, and the way I'm reading it at least, this is a nerf. Tower Elephants also no longer have the Forced March ability, which you get from the Blacksmith in H3, and now correctly only allows infantry to move 100% faster for 10 seconds upon use. It seems Delhi took quite a few hits in this update, with the only large buff being that their early game research speed is faster. The consensus on the forums is that this makes the Civ much weaker, but we'll have to see how things play out. Getting all of your Dark and Fuel Age techs earlier could be much stronger than people expect. Next up, let's take a look at the English. Their only changes are to the Longbowmen's abilities. The first is the Setup Camp ability now deactivates if Longbowmen enter combat. The healing rate was slow enough that I don't think it really impacted the outcome of fights, but logically it felt a bit off to be recovering and fighting at the same time. They can also no longer set up palings on stone walls. 
Next up, for the French, the armor of the French hulks went from 6 to 2. And again, that's the only official balance change. Now, French hulks were probably the most disliked part of the civilization, as they're a feudal age unit that directly counters archer ships, which is the type of ship that every other civ has in feudal. Even after the change, they still have almost double the HP, do 100 damage per ballista shot versus the galley's 30 attack per round of firing, while costing less than twice as much. To me, it still looks like a castle age ship that you get in feudal age. Keeping the changes small though is probably better than overreacting to everyone saying French are completely broken a few weeks ago. Of course, we're going to include bug fixes in here as well, including the French Royal Rebaldican now has its range matched to the standard versions, the gunpowder technology, which I assume they mean chemistry, now applies correctly to the French Galleas, and the Royal Cannons now receive their intended plus 20% attack. It's a bit of give and take, but it feels like more nerfs than buffs overall, and theoretically knight counters being strengthened indirectly affects the French as well. Next, for the Holy Roman Empire, their balance change is they have an increase to the cooldown on their emergency repair ability. The Palace of Swabia and Elsbach Palace also have a few bug fixes that I'd say overall make them a little stronger. The ranged armor of Holy Roman Empire keeps has also been reduced to match other civilizations, which again is technically a nerf. A bug giving men-at-arms an extra 15 health after researching two-handed weapons has also been removed, and the damage provided by heavy maces and two-handed weapons now stack correctly, which should ultimately mean more damage overall. Maybe most importantly though, the prelate no longer stops working when it's bumped by a villager. Of course, don't forget crossbows were buffed, so they'll now do more damage to Holy Roman Empire heavy infantry. It's a mixed bag of buffs and nerfs, but I'd say the prelate working more often is the most notable. Moving on now to Mongols, it says their raiding bounty was cut down, which is a little ambiguous as they get resources by lighting buildings on fire, and there's also a tech called Raid Bounty. To be clear, you get 50 food and 50 gold from lighting a building on fire, and you can pick up the tech Raid Bounty to get an extra 25 food and gold on top of that, which was previously plus 50. Getting the improved version doubles that benefit, though the in-game description still gives the old and now incorrect values. Another change is the Khan's attack speed arrow no longer affects Siege. I'd also consider the Horseman HP nerf to be a balance change for Mongols, as it's a good opening for them with an early stable and double production. As for bug fixes, the superior mobility tech will no longer apply the 50% movement speed bonus twice, so no more Rocket Town centers. The rest of the bug fixes for Mongols are relatively minor in my opinion, so now let's move on to the Rus. First and foremost, Rus can no longer generate infinite relics, this was a game-breaking bug, and ideally would have been hot-fixed weeks ago, but I'm happy to see it in here now. Aside from that, a technology was moved, the Laudia ships now have a movement penalty as they're switching between types, which I like, and switching out of the fishing boat roll now costs an extra 25 wood. Those last two changes I think are nerfing a Dark Age fish boom into an instant Feudal Age army of attack ships. Under the bug fixes, a notable one is that Professional Scouts now provides plus 200% damage to Roost Scouts. They seem to mention this one twice, and it could almost be interpreted as applying to their base attack, but I checked and this is just against animals. Either way, you'll often hunt wolves or boar with roof scouts, so it's good to have that effect working. Laudia trade ships now cost an additional 100 wood, and incendiary arrows no longer increase the attack speed of the Roost Laudia arrow ships. They also mention night torch damage scaling has been adjusted without listing any specifics, but presumably this means worse in the early game and better in the late game. Overall though, I found the Roost changes were the most ambiguous and difficult to decipher. So that's all of the balance and bug changes, but there were also some changes to maps, and I'll highlight what I think are some of the most notable. Archipelago players now spawn more centrally in their island, which in theory should give fewer instances of missing resources. Black Forest had a lot of changes, including more standardized fish, more nearby trees, and the sacred sites are now replaced by large gold deposits. That means Holy Site Victory is taken away from Black Forest, though you still have Wonder Victories, so you don't have to destroy people's landmarks. Danube River also had an overhaul to its layout entirely, as the previous version sounds like it was very difficult to balance. The rest of the maps have various changes that make them more consistent or balanced, and also in general the amount of fish was increased. There's tons of other fixes, but most are fairly minor in my opinion. They do list a couple of known issues though that are being tracked. The first is that certain civilizations are able to collect infinite resources by deleting buildings. I like that they're not announcing how the exploit works, as I think revealing those details just encourages people to do them online. The other is an unfortunately well-known bug involving an Imperial Age tech that can also be abused to generate infinite resources. I'm sure now added to that list is the Abbasid Infinite Spearman range exploit and the Delhi research rates have something strange going on. Remember, this patch is coming out much earlier than promised, and we'll see if they're able to address these new bugs quickly. 
Looking past that, there's been some nice improvements to Chinese and Abbasids in my opinion, and I think the focus on bug fixes more than balance is definitely the right approach. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.